Yeah. Alright, we're live. It's live? Go over to Okay, this is very nerve-wracking. Welcome to the first episode of Attila TV. Our very first guest for the very first episode is the wonderful Emily Chan. Emily was actually a good friend of mine that, um... Chan. Can you redo that? <laughs> oh. You said my last name wrong. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Attila TV. I'm your host, Tommy Wahidim with you. Our very first guest for the very first episode is the wonderful Emily Chen. Emily was actually able to get early acceptance into medical school after just her third year of undergrad. Now for those of you who know, who know how competitive and how hard it is to get into medical school, some people even after finishing undergrad and doing masters still aren't able to get in. The fact that she was able to get in after just three years, and she's going to be very modest about this, but I think it's really a testament to like how smart and how hardworking and how determined she is. So hopefully we can get inspired by her story and we can probably learn some lessons from her path along the way. Emily, thank you for joining us. So let's go back to Emily at 16 years old. What kind of high school student were you? High school, 16. All right, I was very keen when I was in high school. I'm not even going to hold that back, not even going to lie at all. Uh, when I was in grade 11 and 12 in particular, I was just really involved with the community, uh, whether it was a high school community or a greater Oakville community. Uh, I was always um, working on some next project, volunteering, going to different conferences, running different conferences. Um, it was, it was a little too much, I think, to be quite honest with you. I also loved school when I was in high school. I took all the math and all the science courses, and I really enjoyed that. I was really fortunate because my friend group had similar interests as me as well in terms of the academic and kind of just getting involved sense. Mm -hmm. And we were all met together, and it was actually quite fun. Mm -hmm. So then at what point did you realize you wanted to be a medical doctor, and why? Good question. So I think that kind of stemmed from, it started from grade 10. Because at that point, I realized that I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And I knew that grade 11 and grade 12 were very integral uh, years because that was when I had to start applying to different university programs and deciding on a rough career path of what I wanted to pursue. So in grade 10 was when I started just cold calling people and um, trying to look into different career options. So shadowing opportunities, just doing my own research online and whatnot. So I did do a lot of shadowing with different professionals and different types of careers. So like in grade 10, grade 11, like you literally just cold called like an optometrist and say, can I just come in and watch you for a couple of days or? Yeah, so I did that and um, it's actually not as hard as you think it is mm -hmm. because obviously for health professions at least, we all, or at least I had my own optometrist at the time, and so I just walked into her office and I just asked her, can I observe you, can I shadow you for an hour? Mm -hmm. And that was a really, really great experience because it made me realize what fields I would be interested in and what I wanted to look more into, as well as what careers I did see myself pursuing, and I could just cross those ones off. Mm -hmm. So, maybe you're in grade 11 and you say, okay, I want to be a doctor, that's what I want to do. What kind of medical schools were you looking at, like what kind of courses were you taking, like how are you preparing for that path? Uh, so, good question. I knew that at that time... Stop poisoning the question. I mean, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you repeat the question? Okay, so, you're in grade 11, you know you want to go to medical school. What kind of schools are you looking at, and how are you preparing for that path? I think in grade 11, although I was maybe roughly looking at the different medical schools, in Ontario and in Canada, I think I was more focused on how to get to that point, so focusing more on the undergraduate schools. I knew that for both undergrad and for med school, I wanted to stay in Canada, preferably Ontario, and so as a result for undergrad programs, I only applied to Ontario schools. Mm -hmm. I was looking into different science programs and the medical sciences program at Western, which is the one that I ended up choosing. Mm -hmm. I know McMaster has a very good reputation. I think McMaster Health Science is very well known. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose Western as opposed to like McMaster Health Science, for example? So I actually did apply to Health Science at McMaster. Thought I would go, thought I would get in and everything, but I actually got rejected oh, from yeah. the Health Science program. Uh, that was a big, that was a really healthy wake up call for me. Really? It, yeah, it was. And because I had all my eggs in one basket, and when I got the rejection letter, I realized, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? So I started researching other schools, and I looked into Western's MedSci program. It really caught my eye. Uh, I did a open or I did a campus tour there, and I just fell in love with the campus. And the program was so great because all of the modules that you can choose in upper years, and a lot of the courses that you pick are focused on the human body, on the human body, mm -hmm. and the medical sciences, which is what I wanted to take away from an undergraduate science program. 
So now that you're, so you get into Western, you know, you're working towards your medical school degree, or working towards your undergrad degree, hoping to go to medical school. Do you ever still worry that, you know, I have my health side degree, if I don't get into medical school, what's my plan B? Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. For sure. I That thought has been in my head many times. I had a bit of a mid-undergrad crisis, I guess you could call it, because I just woke up one day and I asked myself, like, what are you doing? Sure, you want to go into med school, but are you sure? If that doesn't work out, what are you going to do? And I think these are questions that every undergrad has to ask themselves at every single stage of their education, uh, just to kind of steer yourself on the right path. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I just did a lot of research at what you can do with a BSc degree. I did more emailing, did more cold calls, you know, just messaging people, messaging old contacts that you have, and just having a phone conversation with them mm -hmm. was very, very helpful. Looking into different grad programs, uh, I was looking at master's programs in uh, healthcare, in quality improvement, and even in Ivy, I was considering pursuing a, a business degree as well. Wow. Why did, why did you consider a business degree? I was also interested in business in high school. Had I not picked medical sciences, I definitely would have chosen a commerce degree. And I just liked it because the business world seems so exciting. Mm -hmm. And now, and since I had those two interests in my head at one point, and I had a Bachelor of Science already under my wing, I thought that combining business and sciences would have been a really, really great and exciting career path. Wow. Okay, so you finished undergrad. So. One thing people, viewers may not know is that you actually did not need to get your undergrad degree before you went to U of T. Why did you feel the need to get your undergrad degree? Uh, so I got into U of T after my third year. I didn't finish. At that point, I didn't finish my four-year Bachelor of Medical Sciences degree. Mm -hmm. But I thought about it, and I decided to take summer courses to finish up a three-year major as a Bachelor of Science. And I just wanted to do that because I knew that I spent so many years at Western. I loved what I was studying, and I spent so much time and effort, you know, working towards that degree. I didn't want to just leave it at that. So for me, I guess it was a little bit of closure. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I think that there are many perks to finishing your degree and having that under your name. Uh, just as an example, for medical school at least, you have the option of pursuing a, main, uh, sorry, a master's program in tandem with your medical school education. Mm -hmm. And in order to get opportunities like that, you need to have a bachelor degree already. I think it just opens up more doors for you. Um, and it, it you, you said something off. You said something off camera about how like, like kind of who am I, right? Like, yeah. let's say I'm in medical school. Let's say for like whatever reason I'm not able to get through. Yeah, undergrad is sort of an insurance policy. Can you talk more about that kind of what you were saying? I wouldn't say it's an insurance policy. I think it's important that right now I don't have my MD. I'm an MD candidate. I'm working towards that. Mm -hmm. But all of that aside, like, who am I? What do I have? I have a Bachelor of Science, and I'm very, very proud to say that. I did a great few years at Western, and I learned so much. And I think that having that Bachelor of Science kind of just um, solidified that. Mm -hmm. So going from high school to undergrad and now medical school, what would you say is like some of the biggest jumps you had to make and the biggest lessons you learned along the way? Okay, I think the jump from any level of education, whether it's from high school to undergrad, undergrad to med school, is always going to be learning curves. Every different type of level of education has different demands from you as a person, as well as the curriculum demands and whatnot. I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned was that of self-care and a lot about work-life balance. Mm -hmm. In high school, I was stressed out with the work that I had at hand. And then in undergrad, I realized that, wow, high school is such child's play. Now this is the real deal. Now I'm still stressed out. And even in med school, sometimes I feel like I'm just a big ball of stress, to be honest. And one of the biggest learning curves was that of time management and self-care. Mm -hmm. It's always important, no matter how busy you are, it's always so important to put some time in there for yourself to discover who you are as a person because even though you are a student, even though you will be a doctor one day, you're always going to be a person as well. And mm -hmm. it's important to hold on to that, to discover who you are, your personality, what you love and what you don't love, and um, who and who, what your hobbies are mm -hmm. as well. It's really important to hold on to that. And I think that, you know, giving yourself those self-care days and being able to hit the reset button really helped to motivate me even more. Now, as a child of immigrants, immigrant parents typically, like, they brought their children to, like, a new country. You know, they kind of want to give them a better life. They set really high standards for them. How do you find that balance between, like, you know, do making your parents happy and living up to their high expectations for you and sort of paying them back versus, like, you know, doing what you want to do and making your own self happy? Okay, that's a great question. And 
growing up, I think I did experience, to be completely candid with you, I think I did get a lot of uh, pressure from my parents. But as a result, over time, I think I kind of took that and I started to put pressure on myself because I wanted to make them proud and I wanted to make them happy because they sacrificed so, so much for me. And I really, really do appreciate that and I wanted to show them that. But that's not what chose, that's not what drove me to choose to pursue a career in medicine. I chose that because I genuinely wanted to do that from the bottom of my own heart, not because my parents told me to. Mm -hmm. And I know that medical school is a very, very long journey. I'm only nine weeks in as a first year student and I know that there's so much more ahead. Uh, and so I think that if I was told to go into med school by my parents, say, that wouldn't be incentive enough for me personally to mm -hmm. pursue this. So you obviously, you know, you're obviously doing very well for yourself, and you seem to be a very type A, very motivated person. But I'm sure, like we all go through days where, like, you know, you just can't motivate yourself to get out of bed. You're just like losing motivation. How do you power yourself through those kind of periods? Okay, we all face those days, regardless of where we are in life and what field we're in. I think everybody faces that uh, burnout. I guess is what we call it. And what helps me? I would say. Firstly, hitting the reset button and just taking those self-care days mm -hmm. to care for yourself and to reflect on why you got here in the first place, why you chose to, um, to, to come to where you are in the present. And sometimes it helps if you just think about all that enthusiasm and stuff that you had when you were in undergrad and high school. And even reading like my medical school application is really, really motivating for me to get out of bed and go to the library and make my past self proud. Mm -hmm. So I think looking back and reflecting on the past and why you're here, that's one thing. As well as looking at what's ahead and what as well as looking at what's ahead and what the future could hold for you mm -hmm. and what the future will hold for you, I guess. And I find that talking to professionals, whether they're upper sorry talking to those who are more experienced, whether they're upper years or people who are currently practicing medicine, so doctors in the field, is really, really motivating for me because when they tell me about the perks of their job and how much they love their job or the cool types of techniques that they're doing, it makes me want to focus and uh, get through this test and be the best that I can be now so that I can get to that stage as well in the future. So I have a question I call the 1, the 5, and the 25. Okay. So essentially, where would you like to be a year from now, five years from now, 25 years from now? Okay, wow, good question. Uh, let's see where I am in the present first. So I am in my 10th week of my first year of medical school, and even though we've had this 10 week period to transition into the swing of things, I feel like I'm still definitely not fully integrated into the demands of med school. I still procrastinate like crazy, which is awful. That's something I did in high school and undergrad and told myself I would stop, but here I am still doing that. Uh, so hopefully in second year med school, I would um, kind of tame that habit a little bit mm -hmm. more, uh, be more integrated into the curriculum so I can make the most of my learning, have a good system set in place for myself and be more disciplined. But at the same time, I hope I can still hold on to my work and play balance. I'm pretty happy with that for now. And hopefully I can improve in my clinical skills as well. And hopefully I can learn how to use my stethoscope by that point. That's something I've, I can't wait to do. That would be one year from now. And hopefully I can still be involved in the community mm -hmm. and whatnot then. And you said five years from now. Yeah. So five years from now, I will be in my residency program. At that point, I, can, I hope I can hold on to all the enthusiasm I have as a first year med student and all the energy that I had as an undergrad and make the most of my learning in the clinical environment to make myself the best doctor I can be. Uh, hopefully have a good sleep routine at that point. I heard residents get very, very little sleep, so I drink a lot of coffee, so I guess I'll be doing that. And hopefully I can still uh, make time for myself mm -hmm. um, to keep myself grounded as not just a per not just a resident, but also a person. Okay, let's sneak, let's sneak forward a bit. Let's say like, okay, 10 years from now. Okay. Finish medical school, you finish your residency, you're now a doctor. Dr. Emily Chan. Yeah. Dr. Chan. Um, <laughs> What kind of doctor would you like to be? Like, What would you like to specialize in, things like that? Sure, that's a good question as well. So I'm still exploring different options. What I love about my U of T curriculum, and I'm sure other med schools do this too, is that they give you so much exposure to explore different specialties. But if you could ask me now what I want to do, I would say family medicine, because I like how it's kind of the uh, front line 
uh, practice of medicine and I like how it focuses a lot or it can focus a lot on preventative care I would love to build a relationship with a family or just people I guess and be able to follow them through different stages of life and influence their habits mm -hmm. and whatnot along the way I think that's really really important and I would love to do that and at that point hmm, hopefully I can still stay grounded, hopefully work won't be completely my life, but I will take it seriously because I guess those would be the first years after I graduate, so I have to put in the hours to mm -hmm. make the payoff bigger in the future. And I guess 25 years yeah. from now? Wow, well, okay, I'll be pretty old at that point. Uh, hopefully bit, have an established practice or know what I'm doing at that point. Uh, be very engaged in my practice and with my work but also find time for myself and my family and I hope that at that point I won't just be focused on my clinic or just my practical skills as a doctor but I can also integrate my own passions in that practice as well in my weekly routine so whether it's finding a cause that I'm interested in or volunteering some time as a doctor I think that would be really really cool. Mm -hmm. Now do you, do you have any final advice for people who are thinking about pursuing a career in the medical field or getting to medical school? And even if maybe they don't want to be a doctor, maybe they want to go to medical school, but maybe they just want to help people, what kind of advice would you give them? All right, so first for those who are interested in going into medicine, let me think about that. I think it's very important to establish why you want to go into medical school for one, and most importantly, why you want to be a doctor. So in order to do that, I think a lot of self-reflection is very important. Uh, figuring out who you are, why you want to do this, as well as gaining some exposure in the field as well, whether it's in the hospitals, in a clinic, whatever, because really, if you commit yourself to this, this is going to be the rest of your life. You have to be very passionate, you have to have a love for learning, and a love for uh, what you love for the career, I guess, uh, to avoid burnout and whatnot, and to keep that motivation. And I would say do some research, because Applying to medical school in Ontario, in Canada, in the States, wherever, can be very competitive. So it's important that even though, it, it's important that you fulfill all the requirements that you have, as well as maintaining the, your own integrity and who you are as a person. And as for people who just want to be good people and help others, I would say find your passions and just run with them. I, I would say try to get involved with some leadership roles as you can. So if, say, you find an organization or a volunteer opportunity that you're very interested in, stay there as a volunteer for a little bit and then try to move up in leadership positions as you can to make the greatest impact that you as a student or as a person can do. Mm -hmm. Emily, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Yeah.